Are you experiencing rapid weight loss via a lo low carb but hydrate diet? Um, look, if so, low carb carbohydrate diet seems to be a common or seems to be very commonly deceiving in the eyes of mainstream America. Low carbohydrate diets normally consist of high protein and very limited amounts of carbohydrates in the diet. Nearly, from my observations, nearly in the past decade, it seems as if this. A uh, low carbohydrate diet has been the new craze that everyone's been dying for to lose a uh, large amount of weight. Uh, a popular low carb diet is formerly known as the Atkins diet, but little do people know that it is only short term and does the body some major damage in long term. My claim is that low carbohydrate diets may be harmful to, an, to a healthy adult. Who would be satisfied with losing 15 pounds within a two-week period? All of us, right? Then there's something you should know. First off, low-carbohydrate diets cause greater health problems. It consists of higher-fat diets which elevate cholesterol levels, blood pressure, and other health factors. Uh, high fats come from meats, uh, high dairy products, etc. And Dr. Cynthia Haynes reported on WebMD that these health factors can lead up to heart disease or even stroke. Um, intake of excess protein are more prone to kidney failure, osteoporosis, and kidney stones. Excess protein can lead to kidney failure because of the overload of protein on the kidney to the extent where they cannot, where the protein puts a strain onto the kidneys or the kidneys can't handle the protein anymore. And this is be and in a study done on pros and cons on the low carbohydrate diet, uh, reported by Dr. Kate Watson, 1,624 women's health and food intake was evaluated for 11 years, and researchers found that women who had majority of their intake from protein from the meat had a less functioning kidney. Um, another high protein intake also correlated with osteoporosis because excess protein causes excretion of calcium in the urine. According to a study involving a calcium loss published by Chris Allen in 1989, in the journal Nutrition, they tested 154 human, adult humans on protein intake, up to 200 grams, and found that 1.2 milligrams of calcium was lost in the urine for every one gram rise in dietary protein, which resulted in calcium losses. And the dietary recommended intake for protein is about 46 to 56 grams of protein, depending on gender, and most people could have more protein than that. Um, secondly, the Atkins diet trend has many adverse effects associated to it. The high protein, low carbohydrate diet ca uh, causes the body to go into a ketosis state. Um, in the ketosis phase, it's a metabolism, uh, metabolistic state where the body is trying to find its own fuel for uh, energy and it does so by burning the f um, stored fats you have in your body. And um, body is, and during this phase, the body is forming ketones, which is really toxic and dangerous to the body and it causes um, organs to fail. And since the high protein diet intake is high, they happen to be associated with severe heart problems, like coronary heart disease and or stroke. This is why the American Heart Association is not favorable towards the Atkins diet. Uh, on a, in an article regarding effects on Atkins diet, posted on WebMD reviewed by Dr. Louise Chang and in 2009, in 2009, she found that in an Atkins diet, 50% of calories came from fat, and almost 20 to 30% of uh, calories came from saturated fat, which slightly increased the LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol. Um, whereas in a low-fat diet, only 10% of calories came from the fat. The outcome, or, and the third um, way is uh, low-carbohydrate diets are ineffective, or the outcome. The third thing um, why low carbohydrate diets are not very, don't work too well, or because, the, or because the outcomes of the diet are very ineffective. Um, the diet is very short-term and can gain 
and can be gained back really quickly, and I'm talking about this from experience. Um, and this is due to consuming less energy than burning off the energy. And in my nutrition science and application textbook written by Smolin and Gross Fender, in 2008, they found that in recent studies that low-carb diets indicate short-term weight loss and is due to greater water loss, changes in metabolism and appetite, and with the depletion of carbohydrates from the body, um, um, from the body, the body is missing out on a lot of essential nutrients required to live healthily, and this is why the American Heart Association advises to keep essential nutrients in the body or else you are more prone to more health problems and to prevent this, um, keep carbohydrates in your body or in your diet. All right, Farrah, you've got a very clear label of what your proposition is. There's not really a preview of what the contents is going to be, but as you get to each point, you individually signpost it, Gesundheit. Uh, you use a numerical signpost for it, so if people are paying attention, they wouldn't get too lost. Um, I think uh, you did an okay job kind of explaining the background assumptions. You provide a little bit of information about why you've got some personal credibility on this. Uh, there are some studies that you cite that I don't think are completely cited and then some, there's some information that's presented a huge amount on the first point and that you kind of treat as factual data about uh, risk factors and potential uh, harms. I, I really think that you need to give a source citation on that because it seems kind of conclusionary. I'm not sure that it's obvious why the things would be connected. Um, Later on, though, you did have a few more experts that you cited. You gave us sources on those. Uh, you talked a little bit the, with that study that you had at the end about what the uh, you know, percentage of fat calories were from, or the percentage of calories consumed by fat and how that might have affected things. I thought that was a pretty good uh, source citation on that. Um, like I said, for most of the factual data, it's largely assumed. I think you want to be careful about that. It's a little inconsistent on the source citation. Sometimes you're doing a really good job, and sometimes there's just a whole bunch of stuff that pours out that I don't know where it came from. Um, uh, all the stuff on ketosis, for instance, I've heard speeches on this before. I, I've heard about this issue. I know generally what's going on here, but for right now, I just have you to take uh, on this. I, there's no expert, no authority. You cite the American Medical Association for, or the American Heart Association, but uh, I didn't hear a quote from them about the ketosis issue or the dangers that are associated with it. Uh, your presentation, I think, is a little uh, hesitant. I think you needed to run through it a couple more times. You look a little stuck up there. You, you kind of, there are no gestures, not a lot of you know, involvement in the presentation. Your eye contact's a little bit limited, so you need to be a bit more engaged with the audience. You did have, uh, you come, came to the end, you had an exit line. It was pretty clear that you were at least finished with the speech, if not all of your ideas. Uh, just a little too much reading in the presentation. Thank you very much.